This video is about Lantana and it's really to pass on the information that we found out and experienced from our years dealing with it, trying to eradicate it. You know, we, we've used just about every method known to mankind. This paddock we're looking at now is one of our blocks of land that when we bought it was a jungle. It was just terrible. Absolutely chockers with lantana. And um, when I say chockers, I mean, you know, three times as high as a bulldozer and roots, uh, main stems like as thick as your arm. And it, the other thing that it had was wattle. It had been cleared probably 15 years before we bought it. And they cleared it and left it go and it just turned into the worst nightmare. It was a complete monoculture in that it, it only had, it didn't have much biodiversity at all, mainly only lantana and wattle trees and a few of the standing trees were left, left in there, which we didn't remove, we, we saved them. And I'm just going to show you a comparison of what right out the front of it's like, where the council owns and the national park and I'm also going to show you some of my other property I've got. Uh, so we'll just get on with it and I'll show you uh, the sort of situation that we're left with in North Queensland by, uh, by the authorities and the powers that be. Okay, this is where on the road, out the front of my place, where my boundary starts. This is under the council's jurisdiction. Legally I can't clean it up. They won't clean it up. And all them little pink flowers you can see is lantana. And I don't know if it's coming out very well in this video, but it's everywhere. And if you look behind this crap, you can actually see that's lantana, that's lantana, that's lantana, that's lantana. And I'm going to get sick of this and you're going to get sick of me saying it. But as you can see, in general, you know, they just don't do anything about it. There's rotten wood there that's been there for 30 years. You know, aside from anything else, the fire hazard. You know, if they'd allow me to, I'd get in here with me D4 and clean it up myself and grow some grass on it so at least it'll be able to be controlled. Now the trouble is we got, you know, in some places here we've got big infestations of lantana. And the other side of the road, opposite this is National Park, and it's the same. <laughs> you know, if I was growing a weed of national significance like this, they'd probably put me in jail or something. I mean, they don't because the simple reason, the reason they don't do anything to me about it or other people who've got lantana is because they don't do anything themselves. But the, pr the thing is that the problem is just becoming worse and worse and worse. And it's been left up to individuals who, who own property to clean it up, the responsible ones anyway, and, you know, I'm facing reinfestations all the time because it's growing right up against my boundary. Legally, I can't even clear outside my boundary with machinery or poison or whatever. To, to save me fences from fire, it's just crazy. Here we are back to where I actually took that first bit of the video. This here is along the road again and this is country that's under the control of the council again beside the road. It's right on my boundary and this is what this is the state of affairs here. One thing I hear all the time from these mobs as well Lantana is such an invasive weed that there's just no way we, we could tackle it. You know, like, 
the cost and everything will be so great that it's just, you know, they'll tell you themselves, they just don't know what to do about it. Incidentally, that clear patch through there is part of my paddock. And if you look at that, it's beautiful. Now, it was absolutely covered in lantana when I bought it, and I mean, like, seriously. It took me months and months and months of work with the dozer and... Um, I didn't actually use much poison at all, mainly I used the dozer and the bobcat with a rip and rippers and rakes and Christ knows what and I'm now I've beat it and as long as I just do a small amount of maintenance it will stay that way for a long long time. Here's another shot of this paddock up a bit closer and you can see here where the council's cleared a patch ages ago because it's in the bottom of the gully and the rainwater runs through there so they've cleared it and put in a drain there. Now the signal grass from my paddock's migrated out here and grown. That wouldn't have been cleaned by a grader or a dozer or anything for 15 years. And there's no lantana. So the argument it can't be controlled is just a whole lot of hogwash. And the bottom line is they just don't want to be responsible for, for their own country. I'm not saying that I, I don't have any. Look, I've got plenty of lantana, but, but we're working on it all. From year to year, we're always working on it, and we don't clear up more than we can maintain at any one time because otherwise it beats us. But, you know, if we, we get in, we'll start on 10 or 20 acres or whatever. And we'll just keep at it till we eradicate it and some comes back and then we'll just mechanically go along with with uh, bobcat etc and by hand after it's rained and we'll pull it out and mate you do it for a while and grow some decent grass on it and it gives up This is it further down along my boundary where years ago before I owned it, the guy that ate previously, he got in when they weren't looking with his dozer and cleaned it up. And this hasn't had a machine on it other than a slasher for, well I've been here 17 years and it has, certainly hasn't had any, any work done for that period of time. And there are a couple of um, lantana bushes here, here's one here right on the fence and the reason I'd say that's grown is because seeds come from over in the National Park over there and grown and you know it won't take me long to go along and treat those few plants and have that perfect. Here's a, in the background another one of my paddocks and there's a bit of lantana but on a whole you can see that you know, to deal with the whole lot of the lantana in that paddock, you know, a day and I'd have the whole thing under control where there'd be absolutely no lantana, and we periodically go around and do that. This is the other side of the road, and you can see it's just a wall of lantana. That's the National Park. That's what you're paying your taxes for, to have a National Park choked out by the second most weed of significance on the National Register and they're doing absolutely nothing about it and that's why I keep getting infested because we've got bloody emus and they, they live on the seed off them and um, they bring it in all the time and so you know we've always got a small amount coming in got some more a bit further down the road from where I just filmed the guy bought this place about uh, 12 years ago and it was just a wall of it everywhere here in front of his in front of this gate and he mows it and cleans it up and it just looks perfect it's like a lawn you know I mean you can see here where he hasn't mechanically done anything it's just taking over and you can see over the road here where he's mowed you can see it's all perfect and right beside where he hasn't mowed, 
in the national park is just full of it. You know, there are ways of controlling this weed. But unfortunately, nobody really wants to, well not nobody, that's not true. The powers that be don't want to do anything about it. It just opened a Pandora's box if they all of a sudden said we've got to do something about it. I'm out on the road just before I go into one of my other properties and you can see the whole place right through is just totally infested with lantana. It's private land, my neighbour, one of my neighbours and I'm going to show you my other neighbours in a minute and as you can see it's just completely taken over by lantana and wattle trees and dead trees and in amongst it at times you know they've cleaned it up and they've actually tried to grow some nice trees and they're just getting choked out by all the crap I don't know if you can tell in there but there's a some sort of pine tree and there's a um, uh, what are them things called a I can't think of the name of it, but they're a well-known tree. And if you look down here, this country that's clear, this is ours. And look, we have got some lantana. I'm not making any bones about it. Because there's only two of us and one of us has been out of action for a fair while. But all excuses aside, when we get an opportunity, we clean up and we do what we need to do to slowly push it back and get rid of it completely. This is beside our place. Again, uh, we went along the front now and going along the side, the road into our, in our, into our place. And you can see where we've cleaned up and grown grass. It's not too bad, it's, you know, predominantly it's used for grazing land. You look over there, and I'm going to zoom in here. You can see it is just a wall of lantana. And you know, when it's big is actually the easiest time to actually get rid of it with mechanic with machinery, with mechanical type things. When it's small, I, I, it's harder to get rid of with machinery. The bigger it is with machinery, the better. It, it's a very shallow rooted plant and um, the bigger the better for getting rid of it as far as I'm concerned. We'll continue to go down the road here and I'll just show you the levels of infestation you can get in North Queensland because it's it's an ideal situation it's hot very humid we get copious amounts of water at times you know at the end of the at the end of the dry season it looks like it's all died you get a bit of rain and it just comes back better than ever <coughs> One of the key elements to keeping lantana away in this country is not to leave your ground bare after you've got rid of it. Plant, you have to plant uh, something that's more vigorous or very vigorous, meaning a, a ground cover, you know, like a good grass or some sort of something to cover the ground, otherwise it'll just come back faster than faster than uh, than it took you to remove it. But as you can see by what's in the foreground of this thing, you can see that by growing a decent crop of grass, and this hasn't had any inputs towards get to trying to keep the lantana down. This in the last 12 months has had no spray, no mechanical uh, clearing, nothing. The only thing it has to had 
is cows on it that graze it every few months. We put it in until it's all grazed down. That's it. The cows don't eat the lantana. If they do, they die. They, after a while, they get to know that and they won't touch it. Except you get the odd one that'll die, but pretty good after a while. If you bring cattle into this country from another area and they've been in a situation where they've been browsing cattle, meaning eating trees and stuff, they will eat the lantana and you'll probably lose 10 or 15% of them in the first week. I actually know because I've done it and lost some, unfortunately. So okay, that's, that's about it for the neighbour's place on that side. Well, now I'm going to show you a place, which is our other neighbour. Uh, his parents were here most of their life, so the family's been on the place for... I, I couldn't even guess how long, more than 50 years. I'm going to go and show you what their place looks like. This is my neighbour's country. And as I said a minute ago, they've... They've been in control of this piece of land for I don't know how long actually but I'll bet it'd have to be 50 years and if you can find a piece of land toner on there I wouldn't only be very surprised I'd probably be amazed as well now beside it there there's a boundary fence here and this country you're looking at now is ours and down in the creek we still have some lantana, but the paddocks are pretty well cleaned up now. We had a lot when we came. Some of them paddocks up there that have now got hay in them were actually huge infestations of lantana. In fact, the reason they became hay paddocks was because they had to clean them up. And um, we had to grow something in them to keep the lantana away. So we made them into hay paddocks that were more productive than because we put so much work into them, I tried to get a bit more out of them. <clears throat> you know, like, a lot of people who, I don't know what the correct term from them is, whether they're environmentalists or whether they're green people, or I don't know what they really, how they like to be termed, and I don't want to be derogatory or anything, but... They'd rather see us just leave the whole thing alone and let nature take, it, take its course. <clears throat> and in an ideal world, I guess, you know, that'd be good. But unfortunately, the reality is man's already come in and introduced weeds and plants and animals and all sorts of things that shouldn't have been here. And now I think we've got a responsibility to manage that, that whole situation. You know, this country didn't have wild pigs. It, it wouldn't have had all sorts of things. And unfortunately for me to be financially able to get a piece of ground and look after it, I have to produce something on it or I just financially can't afford to. Even as it is, you know, we're doing it. We are getting a living out of it, but barely. And if you work out the hours each day we work, compared to the um, income we get, it's very low. And a lot of people just see us as environmental vandals. Well, I don't really know what the truth of it is. I mean, I guess it depends on where you stand in the whole thing. But I do know we just can't create a situation and walk away from it and leave someone else to clean up the mess. And that's what we're kind of trying to do and, well, that's what our powers of be are trying to do and it's really about time that, you know, as people we all stood up and be more responsible for the mess that our forefathers have caused. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and um, I'll catch you next time.